Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to start by introducing myself. My name is Mohammed Ahmed Zaki. I am a second year medical student. I would like to also introduce my fellow teammates, Mr. Abdul Qadir, Mr. Abid, and Ms. Habib. We'll begin talking by remembering a story, a story of a, of a man named Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon and his wife tried multiple times to conceive a child, but they failed at doing so. So they hired a surrogate. When Jimmy was asked why, or, or his reasons for hiring a surrogate, he replied, and I quote, my wife and I had been trying for a while to have a baby. We tried a bunch of things. Anyone who's tried knows it's awful, depressing, and hard. So we had a surrogate. Let's look at another story. Natasha Skinner, Maryland. Point information. Point of information. Do you accept? I decline. Uh, Natasha Skinner, Maryland, USA. Natasha was a surrogate for her sister-in-law. The biological mother had cystic fibrosis and could not carry a pregnancy into term. But they were able to genetically create a healthy embryo from, from her egg and her husband's sperm, which was implanted into Natasha. And when Natasha was asked about the best part of being a surrogate, she replied, and I quote, really the best part was at the end when they received the baby, just to see the joy and happiness. I could just see that they were elated. It was very special. Giving something is as important as receiving. Moving on, where do babies come from? That is the question many curious children ask their parents. We as medical students are aware of the underlying biological processes that occur during the human reproductive cycle. If, for any reason, one of these processes fails or an error occurs during it, then reproductive, reproduction may fail and the couple trying to conceive a child may fail to do so. That's where surrogacy comes into the equation. And this may be the only hope for a couple that is infertile to receive or like to conceive a child that is biologically uh, theirs or their own. Some women, some women cannot have no problem conceiving a child, as in producing a healthy embryo, but they cannot carry the pregnancy into term. What happens is that the egg and the sperm are mixed together, and uh, they create a healthy embryo, which is implanted into the surrogate mother's uterus. Some couples have male or female factor infertility, where one of uh, the, uh, the members of the couple either male or female, has a problem uh, producing healthy uh, gonads. Uh, healthy... Uh, gametes. Yeah? gametes. Okay. <laughs> healthy gametes. What, what happens is that the healthy egg or sperm is mixed with donor sperm or egg, and a healthy embryo is created and implanted into the, mother, uh, the surrogate mother's uterus. This can allow a couple to conceive a child which is at least similar to one of them and is, which is not a, a possibility with a traditional uh, adoption. You cannot uh, adopt a kid that is biologically your own or is identical uh, biologically to you. The circuit is uh, appreciated for her effort and, uh, and, uh, and time. She, in this way, is helping another woman she is giving, she is providing a humanitarian service, a favor to another woman in a unique way. She is providing an, a previously infertile couple with the chance, the privilege, and the joy of becoming parents. In the end, we believe that surrogacy should not be illegalized, as, is, as it is denying many couples the privilege of being called mom and dad. Thank you. So you believe it's okay for people to not want to adopt children just because they won't be biologically similar to them? Well, the adoption process takes uh, a long time, uh, and, uh, and uh, but pregnancy takes nine months. But you're adopting a child. The process, the process takes longer than that. Uh, paperwork and stuff like that. And uh, this question will be answered uh, in a later speech. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so you have one minute. Do you want to answer any of the points of information? No, thank you. Okay. <laughs>